Today, I'd like to welcome you to a new series on spirituality. I have received many messages and questions about what the recordings on Living Bani are all about. So in a way, this series is going to put the entire teaching in in a context. It's going to build a context for that teaching. Because some people understand right away because they have had some background, they have had some meetings with teachers who point directly at the truth that's always available and that's how they're able to understand what's being pointed to. Because what's being pointed to on Living Bani is not something that the mind has to comprehend. It is something that's directly evident, directly clear if you simply look. But for many people who have approached spirituality through reading, through listening, through going through the mind, there is, it feels, there feels like there's some gap in the understanding. Because the question is, how do I get there? And most of the recordings on Living Bani is saying, you don't have to get there, you just have to find out who you are. And then find out whether you still need to get there and where the there is. So you see how, even though it, it is simple, the, the way it's spoken, it sounds a bit complicated and therefore some people are asking for a context. So what's the best way to provide that context? I felt the best way was to use Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji's Bani, Salok Mahela Nawa, which comes at the end of the Guru Granth Sahib, which basically, if you're going to put it into a category, it's a category of strong reminders. Strong reminders of what your life is about. Strong reminders of what's important in life. Strong reminders of why spirituality is important. And also a strong reminder of what your goal in life is supposed to be. What is spirituality? You know, we hear this word all around. What is spirituality? In its simplest definition, spirituality is knowing the truth, knowing reality, knowing God. But is it a knowing where I am separate and God is separate? It might seem that way. But Real knowing in God is to dissolve ourself in God, in truth. So what is the self that we are going to dissolve? The self, the one who we take ourselves to be, is simply an idea. We take ourself, our definition of ourself is mainly linked around the body. So we say, I am 42 years old, but we're talking about how long this body has been born. The body continues to change. Ideas continues to change. But there is something here which you call I that has always been the same. It has always been the same ever since you were a child. You said, no, I saw the world when I was five years old. The world was very different. I used to think like this when I was 12. Now I think like this. We use the word I. And we assume it's the same one. But what has been the same? You see? The I that saw the world when it was five years old through the body of a five-year-old and is now seeing the world through the body and the mind, the thoughts of a however old you are right now. The I is the same. You see, what you refer to as I, that sense of presence, it's exactly the same. But what is this? 
So spirituality is about the discovery of who you are by removing mentally all that you are not. So there are many ways to approach that. I thought Salok Mahalanova is a good way to introduce spirituality and put the right context around spirituality. Salok Mahalanova is a Bani that is normally read at the Pog. Pog is a ritualistic reading, the end, the ceremonial reading of the Guru Granth Sahib Ji. And the Pog normally happens when a complete reading of the Guru Granth Sahib Ji is done. It's normally done for many occasions. Most of the occasions is has to do with any kind of life changes. The entire Guru Granth Sahib is read. But this last part here is, you can say, it's like a hammering to the mind. In fact, it's constantly being spoken to the mind to reorient itself towards truth. So it's very important that we contemplate each of these lines. Don't just listen to them. The important point is, let them touch you and let them be the catalyst for a change in your life, to reorient your life towards that which is truly important. Once again, we come to the question, what is spirituality? Spirituality is, to put it simply, discovering the real which has always been and will always be. Discovering the real which has always been and will always be and is right now. And it is, and in that discovery of what's real, you will be able to realize what is not real. The definition of reality is that which does not change, that which does not come and go. The definition of false, the false, is that which comes and goes. So, a wise person, when they hear about reality, that which does not come and go, and when they realize that that is what they're here to discover, they start to look at their life and they start to look at what they are doing and seeing whether their focus is more on that which comes and goes or on that which is permanent, that which doesn't come and go. To give up the focus on truth, on that which does not come and go, to give up the focus of that and give our focus to that which comes and goes and try to get happiness from that which comes and goes, that is the definition of misery. Misery is when we are trying to get permanent happiness, permanent joy from that which itself is impermanent. And even the senses that you're using to try and get that permanent enjoyment, even those senses are changing. The eyes which like to see beautiful things, even the power in the eyes themselves changes. Things will become less clear. The enjoyment in the eyes will then suddenly be affected. The tongue which loves to taste different foods, over time, even that will start to change. 
the touch that we enjoy, touching something soft, soft pillows, something that's very comfortable or whatever it is, even the sense of touch will start to change as you get older and older. Realize that everything we think we want to enjoy in this world depends on our senses being perfectly fine. But if the senses themselves change, and if the things which the senses enjoy, if the things themselves change, then you're having two changeful things. And you're trying to find lasting happiness from two changeful things. This is the sign of an unwise person. This is the sign of someone who does not know reality, who does not know truth. So spirituality is finding that which doesn't change. Whether you call it God, whether you call it reality, whether you call it truth. It is the finding of that which does not change. So without further ado, let's go into the Bani, Salok Mahela Nawa. Today we will cover the first eight Saloks. Guruji starts off with Gun Gobind Gayo Nahi Janam Akarat Keen. Gun Gobind Gayo Nahi. You have not sung the praises of God. You have not sung of the qualities of God. And if you have not done so, then your life is wasted. What are the qualities of God that Guruji is telling us to sing and why is it so important? The question here is, what is God? God is that which we have spoken about earlier, where God is the complete opposite, even though it has no opposites. God is the opposite of what we are trying to find with our senses. God is the only source, the only which is permanent, the only which is always here. What is God? You see, we sing this Bani, and we don't even question what is God. We don't even question what is Guruji telling us to do. How do we find the gun of that which we don't even know? You see, if I, sh if I say the quality of this pen is very good, You'll say, show me the pen. Then you will look at the pen, try out the pen, and then you'll say, huh, yes, the quality is very good. Because you can see the quality. But when it comes to God, how can you see the quality of God? What qualities are there? Now, this is where you have to listen to the saints. This is where you have to listen to those who know. So the quality of God is actually in the Mool Mantra as well. The definition, the qualities of God are in the names of God. You see, you say God is one. So one quality of God is that there is no other in God. The quality of God is one. One in what way? The next line explains it. Guru Sahib says, Kaho nanak har pajmana jeh bed jal ko meen. Ab 
I find this line very interesting and I'm not sure if someone would have seen it this way. But you hear this. Guru Sahib says, Kaho nanak har pajmana jeh bed jal ko meen. Now we translate this right away by saying, Meditate on God the way fish meditates on water. But fish does not meditate on water. Fish doesn't even know it's in the water until it is taken out of the water and starts to struggle and realize it cannot live, that something has suddenly changed. So this line, I see it differently. It helps with understanding the first line as to how to meditate on the quality of God. This line which says Kaho nanak har pajmana jeh bid jal ko meen It says jal ko meen Not mean ko jal It's not mean is contemplating on the jal It's jal ko meen Water to the fish Meditate on God As you would see what water is to the fish All pervasive The fish lives in water, dies in water, moves around in water. There's only water all around it. But all that the fish sees is its own life. What its next meal is going to be. Where it's going. What this, this fish is doing. What that fish is doing. You see? So the fish's attention is not on water, which is the only source of its sustenance. So it says, contemplate on God. Jai jal ko mean. Fish does not contemplate on water. Fish doesn't even know about water. The fish only swims in the water. The fish only uses water. The fish is sustained by the water, but does not realize that that is what is sustaining it. The fish thinks that it's its next meal that will sustain it. But remove the fish from the ocean. Remove the fish from the water. And then it struggles right away. Even though it may have just had a full meal. Guru Sahib says, contemplate. The nature of God is like the water. All pervasive. All pervasive sustaining the fish in this sense we are the fish we think our life is about whatever our next thought tells us it's about we forget that the source the foundation the essence of our life is in God is in truth the closest reflection of God that we have in our life is this sense of being. It has been there our whole life. This sense of being has been there our whole life. We have not paid attention to it. Not even the breath. Not even the breath. The sense of being is even before the breath. The sense of being is even before the breath. It's the one that's aware of the breath. It's the one that's aware of thoughts. It's the one that's aware of sensations. So when Guru Sahib says contemplate on God, on the quality of God, he's not telling us to become mental. He's not telling us to start to think about the qualities of God. He's saying Pajr. He's saying, he's not saying contemplate. He's saying meditate. He's saying be one with God. The closest reflection we have of God in our own experience is this sense of being. That without which nothing exists. So he says, focus on that, meditate on that, on that sense of being. Start with that, that which has always been permanent, that which has always been here. The one thing in your life which has not changed, everything else has changed, your body has changed, 
thoughts have changed. Who you take yourself to be has changed. The people you know have changed. Some have come, some have gone. The world you're in has changed from when you were a child to now. But this has not changed. This is like the water. This sense of being is like this all-pervasive water. And just as the fish does not pay attention to the water, not realizing it is what is sustaining it, that that is the one reality, it has been born, everything in its life has changed, but the water that it's living in has always been what's been sustaining it. It's always been moving through water. But even more than that, for our experience, this sense of being has always been there. So in this line, Gun Gobind Gayo Nahi Janam Akaratikin, if you do not sing the praises of God, if you do not sing the qualities of God, and to sing the qualities of God actually means what? When you're singing something, what does it mean? It means to remember it. It means to hear about it. You know, but not just to hear about it, to dwell in it. When you sing something, you get lost in it. So focus on this sense of being. Otherwise, your life is wasted. You think your life is about this person and what happens to this person. That's a very small part of it. That's like the fish that thinks its life is about its next meal. That thinks its life is about what it does in that thing. In, in, on that day but actually its life is the ocean without the ocean it has no life it has no next meal to look forward to it has no any of this in the same way without this sense of being that has always been there without realizing this and without paying attention to this your life is also wasted and he says kaho nanak Har pajmana jeh bid jal ko mean. Focus on God. Pay attention to the reality, to the truth, beginning with that which has always been all pervasive, the one unchanging that pervades every experience of yours, whatever the experience may be, good or bad, sweet or sour, pleasant, unpleasant. The sense of being has been the one pervasive quality in all your life. Get to know this, otherwise your life is wasted. The next lok, Guru Sahib says, Bikhya na seo ka he racheo, nimak na hohe udas. Bikhyan, that which is useless, that which is trash. Bikyan seo ka he rachyo. That which changes. That which comes and goes. If you're, let's say you chase after something your whole life. And you still get it. Okay? You spend your whole life saying, I'm going to chase wealth, for example. And you chase wealth. You say, I want to become a billionaire. I want to do this. Nothing wrong with that. But let's say you chase it. And it takes you... 30 years of your life to do that. Okay? There has been no other focus in your life other than that. And after 30 years, you get it. Is it permanent? What guarantee do you have that you will live another 30 years to enjoy that wealth? What guarantee do you have that that wealth itself will stay. The wealth is going to start to deplete from the moment you get it. And your life is getting shorter with every breath. So having spent 30 years of your life to get something which you cannot keep and to spend 30 years of your life Missing out on that which has always been permanent and is the source of true happiness. Guru Sahib calls that bikyan, wasteful. Because it's not something you can keep, it's not something that's true and lasting. So he says, Bikyan is your kahe rachio. Why are you immersed 
in that which will eventually go away. Why is your mind occupied in that? Not even for one second, not even for one blink of an eye, are you discontented with the ephemeral nature of whatever you're chasing. To be discontent in this sense is to be looking for that which is higher. He is saying, right now your hopes are on things of this world which are perishable. Another meaning for udas will be not just sad and depressed, but udas means to go beyond all hopes for things in this world. To make your, if you're going to hope for something, if you're going to chase after something and hope that it's going to give you something, then chase after that which is true. But the interesting thing is you don't have to chase after that which is true. That which is true is always here. That's the irony in life, that that which is always here, that which is permanent, is nearer to you than your next breath. But not knowing it, you waste your life in chasing that which is perishable. You see? Guru Sahib says in the next line, Kaho nanak paj harmana pare na jamaki pas. So he says, if you spend some time, instead of chasing after the things which will perish, instead of having hopes that this will bring you happiness, that will bring you happiness, this thing will bring you happiness, instead of that, he says, meditate on God. And the way to meditate on God, there are many different ways. But, the key is intention. What is your intention? Because I'm going to jump off on a side note now and share something with you. There are a lot of traps in spirituality. A lot of ego traps. Many times when you start to experience something in your meditation, you will forget that the reason why you're meditating is to discover the reality, is to discover God, is to love God more. You might start to build something up about yourself saying, look, I have experienced this. And in your next meditation, for many years after that, you might be trying to chase after that experience. Not realizing that even that experience is something that came and went. And while you're doing that, you're missing out on that which has always been here. You forget that your goal was to love God, to meet God, to dissolve in God. And you've changed your goal to chasing after experiences. So what you've done is instead of chasing after outside experiences, you started chasing after inner experiences. There is only a difference of quality there. The foolishness is in both. It's only a difference of quality. You're now chasing after subtler things. But isn't that what spirituality is? No, spirituality is not about chasing after inner experiences to build your ego. What will inner experiences do for you? If they are not removing your sense of self, if they are not dissolving you in God, they are a bondage too. They are one of those traps. You see? If you are in spirituality, so-called, but there is more of you, more ego, more I have got this, more do you know what I can see when I'm there? Do you know how close I feel to God? The lovers of God don't speak like this. They don't speak like this. The lovers of God only think about God. 
the lovers of God want to spend every moment in the remembrance, dissolving themselves in the love of God. They don't want to prop themselves up. They don't want to make spirituality about them and how far they got and how much progress they're getting. They understand one thing. Effort is important. But the grace will be by the Guru. You see? Karmi ave kapra, nadri mok dwar. Grace is what will make you get there. Lord's grace. Because there's only the Lord, you see. Your effort is to try and pray and beg for your dissolution in God. Don't beg after experiences. They come and go. Doesn't matter how great they seem. If they're building you up, that's a distraction. They're taking you away from God. You may have started with a very pure intention. I want to meet you, God. I want to meet you, Guruji. But then, if you start to think about yourself and your progress and where you're at, and I can see this now, and I get this now, it's the I again, isn't it? It's the subtle ego now, isn't it? I have stopped chasing after the world. Now I am only after God. But even that doesn't sound like a devotee, no? That still sounds like someone who has a lot of ego. Now I'm chasing God. You are chasing the world. But it's still I, 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 you see? Someone who truly meditates on God has less of themselves. They don't want to speak about themselves. Because they see that this idea of themselves is not true. They are dwelling in the permanent. Not even dwelling. They dissolve themselves in it. There's no one there in there to, to say, I am dwelling in the permanent. It's just God, God, God. So Guru Sahib says, why are you stuck, occupied with that which comes and goes? And not even for one moment are you discontent that this is going to come and go. Because you don't see the reality. You don't see the reality that this will come and go. You think as long as it's here, I'll enjoy it. But misery will be the result when it goes, you see. So he says, not even for one second are you discontent with something that comes and goes. Because only when you become discontented with something that comes and goes, will you start to look for that which does not come and go. And the good news is, once you start looking for that which does not come and go, you don't have to go very far to look for it. It's right there. It's the key of your experience. It's the basis of your existence. You can start with that which has not come and gone. Your sense of being. This is Kahona Nakpa Jharmana Parayana Jamaki Pas. If you meditate on that which doesn't come and go, Guru Sahib says, you will discover and merge in that which doesn't come and go. That which doesn't come and go is not born and does not die. When you discover that, when you realize that, then you also are not born and don't die. Because you discover that deathless one. Not you discover, it is you. But it becomes much more clear that that is you. That this body that you've taken yourself to be changes. But there is something which has not changed. Someone told you the body is born. You know nothing of that. Someone tells you the body will die. You've seen many deaths. Yet there's something. The body is not deathless. But there is 
something. This has to be discovered, otherwise life is wasted, Guru Sahib says. In the next slok, Tarnapo Eohi Gayo Leo Jara Tanajit Tarnapo means childhood, childhood, young adulthood. So he says, childhood, adulthood, Eohi Gayo. It has been, you know, it has passed away so fast. Where is 20 years ago in your experience? Only the mind keeps track of time. But when you are here, you're like, you look at your age and you look at 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, for some people, 50 years ago. Eohigayo, it has just passed. Leo jara tanajit. And old age has come on the body. Old age does not come on the soul. Old age does not come on what you are. What you are has always been what you are. But it's your identification with that which was young and that which got old. Your identification with the body and with the identity and with the mentality. So this is what's happening. This is going to keep on changing and one day this will disappear. So find that. Kaho nanak paj harmana au the jat hai beet. says just as childhood has already disappeared and old age is overtaking the body. Meditate on God. Find that which does not age. Find that. Look at that. Look for that. Look, where is it? What in your experience is exactly the same right now in this moment as it was when the body was five? I'm no longer going to say when you were five because you were never five. You are this presence. When Guru Sahib says, meditate on God. Don't separate a you who will meditate on the sense of being. That is just creating a mental concept of you. That is also seen. Meditate on God. Be one with this sense of being. Start with this first. If you rest with this, if you focus on this which has always been, which is permanent, focus on this. Your only connection to God is this, not any other idea you have of God. The only experiential reality you have of that which has not, does not come and go, which we call reality, which we call truth, which we call God, that's this sense of being. Be with this sense of being. Start with this. Start here. The mind will take you to different places. Bring it back to this sense of being again. The mind will then say, no, it's about, your journey is about this. You have to see this. You have to do that. But realize, anything that you see, even internally, will come and go. That which you are, cannot be seen yet it cannot be denied Guru Sahib says meditate on God because this body is not only getting old it will drop one day spirituality is to realize you whatever you are are living in a body that's going to drop one day that is so fragile that at any instant it can drop away. Just a fluctuation in the temperature of this body and this body will drop away. Just the wrong particle of virus comes in this body and if the body cannot handle it, this body will drop away. This is the opportunity you have while you're in this body to discover what you are, which is not the body. Do not let this be mental. Guru Sahib does not say, think about God, think about God, think about God. No. He says, Har Paj. Paj means, um, you know, there is no word equivalent to that in English. 
we have heard it say, we have read other translations that says vibrate. It's not really vibrate. It is become one with God. Become one with God. Pajihar. Full attention on this. On this har. Sense of being first. This is the only access point you have. Nothing else. The only access point you have in your experience to that which does not come and go is your sense of being. Focus on that. Time is passing. In the next slow Guru Sahib says, Bird payo sujay nahi Kaal pohuchyo an The same, same emphasis over and over again. You're getting old. You're still not understanding. You're still chasing after that which comes and goes. You're still not looking at that which does not come and go. Death is coming for the body. But if you don't discover what you are, then with the death of this body, the ignorance continues. The ignorance continues. Because you have not freed yourself from the mind. Freed yourself simply means you have not recognized that the mind is also just another covering. First is the covering. Externally, if we go from outside to in, externally there's the world, then there is the body, then there is the mind internally. Then there is you that's aware of the world, the body, the mind. The world changes, the body changes, the mind is constantly fluctuating. That which sees the mind is not fluctuating. Discover that. Kaho nanak nar bavare kyo na pajay bhagwan. Why don't you bring your attention here? Why don't you devote yourself to this? Why are you devoting yourself to things which will come and go? Why are you devoting these precious breaths and wasting them in that which comes and goes? Guru Sahib then says, Tan dara sampat sagal Your wealth, your wife, your treasures, all of it. Jin apani karman that you have taken to be yours. That you have taken to be yours and that you are proud of. You say, ah, this is my wealth. This is my house. This is my wife. This is mine. Look at what I have accomplished. Guru Sahib says, all of this, in me kach sanghi nahi, none of these things are actually your true companions. None of these things are even attached to you in that sense. Nanak Sachi Jan, realize that. Realize that these things that you call yours are just simply, you have tied the ropes around them by saying that they are yours. But this is simply a mental concept. This is mine, this is mine, this is mine. To say something is mine just simply means I have identified myself with it. Now suddenly when something happens to what I call mine, it will start to affect my mind. See, something which is not mine, let's say for example right now, uh, something happens to someone's car. You hear about it, you go, oh, that's not nice. Something happened to someone's car. It's not that nice. But now if they realize, no, no, not someone's car, your car. Then immediately, the fluctuation starts to happen in the mind. But why is that the case? Because the minute you link yourself possessively to something, it has become a part of you. When it's become a part of you in that sense, when something happens to it, something will happen to you. The you that you've taken yourself to be, obviously, not the you that you really are. So Guru Sahib says, realize they are not really yours, nor do they have anything to do with you. You have just forced a connection 
between the perishable things of this world and this body. When you say something is mine, who does it belong to? It belongs to this body. Who else does it belong to? You see, if, if you go to some place uh, and they ask for your ID, they're just looking at your body. They're looking at your face. They don't know you. If you come in a different body, theoretically, let's say, you can jump out of your body, you come in a different body and you say, that car is mine. The person will say, no, show me your ID. Nope, you don't look like this person. So everything in this world and this transaction is based on this body. When you are not the body, how can anything be yours in that sense? So Guru Sahib says, In me kach sanghi nahi nanak sachi jan. Realize, none of these things are actually your association. Realize this in truth. Guru Sahib then says, Patit udharan pehe haran har anath ke naath. Says, God is that who redeems the unredeemable, redeems those who have so-called done wrong. And Pehharan, how does God redeem those who have so-called sinned? He redeems those by making the person realize that they are not that. That is the mind. That is the body and the mind and the identity. When you rest in the sense of being, when you rest in that which is permanent and dissolve in that, by simply coming back to that over and over again, realizing your true identity, then you realize this one has never sinned. A gold piece or a diamond piece that is in the mud does not become any less valuable. The diamond itself cannot be impure. It is the dirt which is impure. When the diamond is picked up out of the dirt and wiped out, the diamond, even while the dirt is on it, is still the diamond. Your true self, even while the obstruction of the body and the mind, and you think that you are that, even while you think you're that, you're still not that. This is only a param. This is only a, a delusion. This is only a belief. So God, in this sense, understand the only experience you have of God is this sense of being right now. The only experience. Every other experience of God that you have is mental. Every other experience of God that you have will depend on this sense of being. So don't leave your only experience for God for an imagined future experience of God. Patit udharan peh haran He removes the fear. When you rest in being long enough and realize what you are, what you're not, you realize this cannot be harmed. When you realize that this cannot be harmed, the fear also goes. Everything is pointing back to that. Do not miss this. Do not miss what spirituality is. Spirituality is not spiritual experiences. Spirituality is not you having a journey with God and the Gurus. Spirituality is realizing that which is always here. And it begins with what's nearer than near. Where do you have to travel to find that which is nearer than near? You see? Har anath kinath. We are all orphans. We are all masterless if we think we are this body because there's nothing that can sustain this body. This body, the only thing that's sustaining this body is God. But you're not the body. This life, this sense of being, this presence, it's not something you're experiencing. This presence is what you are. This is the anath ke nath. The one that has no sustainer, 
this sustains it. This sustains itself. कहो नानक तह जानी है सदा बस्त तुम साथ रियलाइज सी गुरु साहेब सेंस कहो नानक तह जानी है रियलाइज दिस सदा बस्त तुम साथ दैट पतित उदाहरण पै हरन हर अनाथ के ना लिव्स विद यू ऑलवेज तुम साथ इज ऑलवेज हियर व्हाट इज गुरु जी टॉकिंग अबाउट You are talking about chasing some experience of God. I will experience God when Guru Sahib is saying no. Here, right now, sada bas the tum saath. You are not seeing it. You are not aware of it. You are not seeing it. What can he point to? Always begin. That's why I said this bani is a beautiful way to put into context what I have been speaking in living bani about the sense of presence. This is the only access point you have to that which is permanent. Don't miss it for some idea of what you think you're supposed to get. Sada bas tum sa always with you. Why are you going out to find it? Why are you going in to find it? Even going in is putting attention away from this which is neither in nor out. your sense of being is it inside you or outside you what is this you that you have set as an arbitrary that has an in and an out it's simply a concept played in the mind seen by the sense of being that you are do not miss this don't miss this guru sahib then continues and says tan dhan je to ko dio ta se ne ho nakin कहो नानक नर बावरे अब क्यों डोलत दीन गुरु साहिब सेज योर वेल्थ योर बॉडी ऑल ऑफ दिस सम पीपल कैन इंटरप्रेट दिस लाइन टू मीन लुक गॉड हैज गिवन यू एवरीथिंग राइट वाई हैव यू नॉट डिवेलप लव फॉर दिस वन हुज गिवन यू एवरीथिंग बिकॉज यू आर टू बिजी विद वॉट यू बिन गिवन टू पे अटेंशन टू द गिवर giver in what sense all experiences in life is only possible when the sense of being is here this is the only reflection of god you have to begin with now if you don't develop love for this sense of being and you interact and get caught up in that which comes and goes then what happens then you simply flow in that direction and you miss the god that's present here now so guru sahib says hey foolish person you have become deluded you've become mad you're chasing after that which cannot last and you're missing that which is with you which is forever permanent now go to that which does not dole go for that which does not shake the unshakable one what is that in your experience tan dhan sampa sukh diyo arje nike taam kaho nanak sun re mana simrat kahe na ram guru sahib continues to remind us In this bani guru sahib continues to remind us why are you not remembering god why are you not meditating on god why are you not putting your attention on this which is always permanent why are you putting your attention on that which comes and goes this is a constant reminder keep in mind this is not a bani for someone who's dead someone who's dead may have wasted their life this is a bani for those who are still in the body This is a bani for those Guru Sahib saying there's still time there's still time okay tan dhan sampa sukh diyo wealth treasure body out of this you get happiness and your status in life 
All of this is only possible as long as you're alive. But if you don't pay attention to what it is that is alive in your body, you see, many times we have heard this kind of Bani where we say, remember God, otherwise He'll take everything away from you. Remember God, He'll take away everything from you. God has no interest in taking anything away from you. Okay? So don't pray to God out of the fear that if you don't pray to God, things that you want will be taken away from you. This is a childish approach. This is not spirituality. That's childish. God has no interest in your things. Your things and your attraction to those things and your interest in those things is your delusion. Guru Sahib tries to wake you up out of the delusion to come into that true experience which is forever with you already. It's the one doorway to truth. It's the one doorway to the everlasting. It's the one doorway to the impermanent. Your things will go anyway. This body cannot escape death. When that happens, that's a different matter. Your things will go anyway. Why does Guruji need to take them away from you? You understand? You want to play with toys? Play with toys. But they will break. You will break. But while you're living, what is this life? And you learn to contemplate that. That is true spirituality. True spirituality is the contemplation. Not just contemplation, but the sitting with the sense of being. Start with that. So, when Guru Sahib is talking about meditating on God, there's no concept to meditate on God. You can do Nam Japna. You can say Vai Guru, Vai Guru, or any other name. You can do meditation, you can focus. These are all tools. But they are tools to silence the mind. They are tools so that you can see what's behind the mind. Don't get too engaged in the tools. Don't get too immersed in what you expect to come from using those tools. Like I said, don't forget, this is about dissolving yourself in God. It's not about progressing and having a spiritual ego about how great you are now that you are less worldly. That is still the mind. Realize, don't waste your time. Realize while you still not only have breath in you, while you have this being here that's right here, pay attention to this life. Pay attention to this sense of presence without which there is nothing in your life. Start with this first. So today we have covered eight saloks in Salok Mahala Noah. And all of it is pointing to the same thing over and over and over again. It has been a good vehicle for us to use to explain spirituality. And I hope it has provided a better context as to what spirituality is all about and a better context to what it means to be with the sense of being and why that is important. Because this sense of being is the only real experience of God that you have. Not even you have it. Who is the you that can have this experience? You see what I mean? Simply pay attention to this sense of being. This is the doorway. Don't make anything up. Don't create any new concepts. You don't need it. God is nearer than near. Sada bast tumasat. So we will close it here for today. And we will continue to look through Salok Mahala Nawa and use it to be the fuel in the fire of spirituality that will help us to reorient our life towards that which we have the opportunity and the great grace 
to discover. It will be a disgrace to have heard such a teaching and to still miss. Let's not miss this opportunity. Gun go bind gayo nahi janam akarat keen kahunanak harpajmana jahabit jal ko meen.